Welcome to What's What. I'm your host, Benji, obviously. And today we've always got the great, the wonderful, the sexy producer Josh. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? I look good today. I look fresh and clean. And we're hoping that one day he'll be in front of the camera, but this time he can't demo light because I'm unfortunately isolating because one of our members of our family might have COVID. We're, they're getting tested. We'll find out in the best. But if you see me cough, it's the cat. So, you know. Um, anyway, we've got quite a busy day um, today. Uh, we've got a few things that's happening. Did you just put your hand up or something like that? Are you able yeah. to do that? Yeah, I mean, you cover that. You cover that topic really quick. I mean, do you want to expand on it? Are you getting tested? Have you got tested? What's, what's happening? I, I always have. Are you Are you, you okay? Know? I'm I'm okay. You know, I'm perfect. Um, I'm surprised we haven't had the sound effects yet. But anyway, we'll go straight into it. We've got yeah. quite. A hope, hope everyone's place. okay, man. Hope everyone's alright. Nah. F- <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Quick, quick. Uh, talk. We'll just go through things very, very, very quickly. <laughs> for things that are coming up. Uh, first of all, we've got a uh, Craig Thompson show that's happening on March 11th with David Tui Tupo, which you may know him from winning King in the Ring at one point. I should actually put this on she- a screen share because I haven't done that yet. There we go. There we go. There we go. David Tui Tupo, excuse my pronunciation because I shit at that. He is fighting Mo Hussain. Sorry, Hussein. Mo Hussein. I believe they've actually fought each other in kickboxing. So, yeah, well, there you go. They've actually fought each other in kickboxing. So, then both cross, um, going over to professional boxing to fight each other. It's going to be interesting. And um, this is uh, David's third fight, I believe. He's fought once in the, uh, he's fought twice in the in their version of the Super H. Um, so, it's going to be interesting, um, especially since uh, we haven't actually seen Mo Hussein since his fight with Junior Far, which he lost by TKO in 30 seconds with Junior Far. So, you know, uh, next topic we've got um, the Herminator's return on March 12th in Australia. Uh, we don't know much about his opponent yet, but, you know, it's always interesting to see him fight. You know, as the Herminator actually grew up here in Glenfield, I'm actually living in Glenfield now, so, you know, woo! I'm practically his brother. Uh, <laughs> cousin, uncle, auntie. More like an auntie. So, you know, second cousin. I don't think that's how it works. Pro. Oh, okay. Um, next one. As you might know, this guy, we didn't actually bring up his profile last time, but we spoke about him last time when he defeated James Porter in James Porter's retirement match to win the Australasian heavyweight title, which is probably his biggest win of his career. Uh, well, he's only had three. Um, he also fought uh, Shane Cameron not too long ago, as we, that's what we discussed. discussed. That was uh, Shane, Cam- uh, Shane Cameron. I apologize, Sonny Bill Williams. He fought Sonny Bill Williams not too long ago um, during last year. And that was Sonny Bill Williams' return fight. Um, he'll be, we believe that he's defending his Australasian title against uh, Chris, again, I apologize for this uh, mispronunciation, De- um, Chris Terzivsky. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies um that's happening on march 5th again on australia australia's going all the new zealanders like all of us just need to move over there so we can actually see what's going on um brian amatruda who's always been like quite big in australia and melbourne um as well as what's his name uh lost my, lost his name but you know i'll get back to it um big promoter big promoter there. he actually owns his own venue so you know Next topic, like I said, we're going through quickly. Benjamin Callagher is fighting another New Zealander named Peter Sal, sorry, Sal Isui. I've actually I've written <laughs> articles about this. Oh, shut up. I've They're written hard, articles. Top names, eh? Yeah, yeah. I need to work on my pronunciation. He, um, Peter, actually, he fights alongside with his family. Um, I think there's like three or four boxers in that family. Um, they're all ranked at the moment. Well, not like top 15 ranks, but like they're all ranked in Australia and they're all fighting actively. Um, they're heavyweight, anything between heavyweights to, I think, middleweight or something along those lines. Um, so that family's quite active um, and they're fighting soon on March 19th. I don't know who the promoter is, but still very interesting to see. So that's our um, quick wrap, wrap up what's happening that's going to be happening in March, at least from what I'm aware of. We'll probably keep on talking about it so, um, in the next couple of weeks. 
on possible uh, events that are coming up in Australia. So yeah, anything you want to make a comment about? Josh? Uh, no, no, that's uh, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, go on. I, I, I think you muted yourself, Benji. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> sound effects right there um oh yeah it's quite interesting um to see david uh tui tu po returning and craig thompson doing his shows again we're in these sort of um times where we have to you know rely on uh corporate tables only uh we've kind of always relied on corporate tables only but even more so for the fact that uh, we only need uh, we only allowed 100 people so yeah so yeah so that was the quick talk Talk, we, we, we could say we should have some like interesting like quick fire music like da -da 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 in the background um okay junior far has been um was in the news recently did you know about, about this no i didn't i'm excited to know uh what's happening with that so as we all know george uh Cam camboso uh, he's making cambosis yeah, cambosis he's making his return to australia defending his world titles on june 5th um, and apparently Junior Fire is going to be um, on the undercard of that show. Okay, so so uh, George is going to be fighting uh, Lamachenko? Um, I believe so. Um, wow. This is like only breaking news, like like who he's going to fight today. Uh, Junior Fire's news came out a couple of days ago. So, oh, actually, no, it came out last week, so it's very exciting. Um, Junior Fire has been like, you know, expressing his frustration of not being able to fight um but he sees it as a curse and a blessing because at least he gets to witness his uh, daughter's birth so one of his um i think it's his daughter his daughter's birth who just recently you know came into world so you know it's great to actually you know have some home time okay so i mean it's been about a year since he's fought right i mean he's just gonna 2017 yeah yeah almost fast. exactly yeah but he, again, he still has to wait a couple of months before his fight in, on June 5th. So, you know, it'd be nice to actually be able to see him fight before then. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we all like a good junior far fight. So, yeah. And like, I guess I want to say comparing junior far with Joseph Parker, I think junior far in a way has got more freedom because Joseph Parker have openly said that he would never fight Tyson Fury. And if Tyson Fury becomes the undisputed world champion one day, then Joseph Parker sucked. Um, <laughs> where Junior Far, like he, he'll fight anyone, so it doesn't really matter. So, you know. Uh, now, I mean, yeah, yeah, he is a, a long Josh. way away from fighting Tyson, though, right? I mean, he's a long way. Yeah, I mean, uh, Joseph Parker is much closer, but Junior Far, I guess Joseph Parker's got more opportunities, but Junior Far, I mean, they're wanting to not restart his career, but revamp up his career over the yeah. next uh, couple, coming months, especially in 2020. 22 where he you know he's got more opportunities more Austra oh, Austra american time per se and i think in a way junior far actually let's just go back to his profile i'll bring it up junior far has had more fights in america than joseph parker has hasn't he so he's had more american tv so like that was in that was yeah one two three fights in america i i feel like <laughs> people are like no 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 joseph parker's had more tv time but you know like one two three has has Joseph Joseph Parker fought more Four. times overseas? Yes, yes, oh. he has. Junior Far has had more recent America American fights. So. Correct. That's that's because he was with Lou, right? Lou DeBella. Yes, yes, exactly. So, you know, that that could have some good possibilities. And also Joseph Parker, he's now a freelancer now. Um, he's not. Ex he doesn't have an exclusive deal with Matchroom. So it brings up a lot more opportunities for him. So um, Junior Fire, I guess, wants that Joe Parker fight eventually one day, but it's just he needs to rebuild himself back up to where he was before. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving like, uh, right along, um, I we're going quickly, uh, Patrick Maliata, he's making his boxing return since 2020, his last fight wow. he lost. Um, it was quite a surprising loss as well. Um, here's the thing. Um, 
what people don't know is that he had this good running streak, one, two, three, four, and then from that point onwards, he had multiple fights lined up. Um, he pulled out on a multiple fights. One of them was because he was going to try get into the Olympics of 2020, or which ended up being 2021. But he missed out because he just could, uh, it was too late for him to try and, you know, qualify. So it ended up being like, what the fuck are you trying to do? <laughs> um, but then, like, there were multiple opportunities for him to actually fight. He didn't take them. And then he had his next, uh, his next fight. I don't, I'm not sure if it was last minute or we just, no one just really spoke about it. And then he ended up losing by a majority decision. Um, the guy that he lost to, um, he's had a, you know, not too bad run, but they're mostly fights in Mexico. So, you know. What do they call him? The Black Lion, right? The Black I Lion, heard, yes, I right. heard he, yeah. I heard he was an insurance salesman, full-time insurance salesman, yeah. Oh, well, you know, you got to have a day job in boxing if you're, unless you're, you know, got a full team backing you. But in my opinion, like, if Patrick Maliato wants to continue his American... Um, tour, you could say. If he wants to keep on making a big name for himself, he needs to make these more important wins. Like, he's going against um, Terrell Woods. Um, I don't know much about him. There you go, he won the ABF American title. <clears throat> well, but, he's, you know, he's, he's lost more than he's won. Yes. <laughs> kind of, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Well, I that, guess, that kind of, you know, I guess it's okay. I mean, you know, uh, he needs a comeback fight, right? He needs a comeback fight, and uh, Patrick Maliata needs to make a statement. He is fighting, so an American time will be out, so it'll be our set day there Friday, so, you know, in two days. So, you know, that'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, hopefully it goes forward and, you know, not that aware there's any problems or anything, but you know, hopefully things are happen. Interesting things. Uh, others they got Muay Thai fights on the on the same night, so you know, mix martial arts. Well, not mix martial arts, but mix fight codes throughout the night. All right, um, moving on right along, we're going to Floyd Mason. Floyd Mason's now booked in for a fight for March third. I believe this is going to be for some sort of major regional title, but nothing's being announced yet. Um, this is a very important fight for Floyd because this will be his first entry into um, the, re the regional game. Um, he had his first big, big major win against um, Mark Flanagan for the Australian title and Australasian title, which he defended. Um, so, yeah, this is actually, he's growing quite a bit of a name for himself. He's already in the top 40 in the cruiserweight division for WBC. Um, and I think he's going to be a a big name overseas. He's a big puncher as well. And Mark Flanagan is, you know, uh, just to recap, he also fought Dave Light. Uh, Dave Light, and uh, for the recap, for what belt was that? So a better way to do a good recap for Mark Flanagan is that he's a two-time world title challenger. So he went for the world title twice and he lost both times. He's fought uh, David Light for the WBO Oriental title, which David Light. Uh, I believe has been stripped recently because of his inactivity and injury. Um, and he also fought uh, Joe, Joe, Jay Opatai, Jai Opatai, Jai Opatai um, recently as well and lost. So this was uh, Mark Flanagan's, um, not third loss, or he had a win recently as well. But it, it, this, this is like, you know, there you go. He won against uh, Benjamin Callagher, another New Zealander. But yeah, so this is actually quite important. It was an important fight for Mark Flanagan to get himself um, on a good active role, but Mark, oh, sorry, Floyd Mason has done an amazing job. Um, big, massive win against a two-time world title challenger. And like, look, he's actually made himself top 30 in the world on box rec, which as you know, is um, also a big deal. So yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you wanna if you wanna watch a proper scrap on one of Floyd Mason, you go and uh, make make sure you check out uh, Nervosa and uh, versus Floyd Mason. Pointing down on the mouth guard, the warrior spirit all on fire. Floyd Mason has been rocked. He's well ahead in this fight. The Otto's tired now. Has he punched himself out? Final minute. 
Has he got enough acid in the tank? <laughs> Mustn't now starting to come back. Shades of Arturo Gatti, Mickey Ward. 45 seconds to go. Still plenty of time on the clock. That was a uh, banger. Smiley. That was Smiley. Yeah, Smiley, yeah. yeah. That was his and, third fight. Yeah, that was at the and AMI I, Netball Center. And I also recently I looked at that up and I saw like your interview with uh, Floyd Mason. It's like, oh, how's your time in New Zealand? Is it your first time in New Zealand? Oh, I'm from New Zealand. Expecting it to be a good fight. How was the flight over here? Did you fly at the same time as Lucas? Or? No, I arrived... Um, Yesterday morning, okay. so I've just pretty much uh, caught up on my sleep yesterday, and then did a light session last night, and then um, yeah, had a had first a... time in, in New Zealand. Or... No, I'm from New Zealand. Oh, okay, that's yeah, right. So that's from... right. I remember. Do you train in Perth, right? Yeah, I okay. train in Perth, but I used to box uh, in Taumere Boxing Club okay. up near Hamilton, and then um, yeah, and then I moved over to Perth to train at Nashie's Boxing Club. Hey, look, man, that, look, he was, you know, he was, he was an up and comer back then, you know, and, and, you know, that was just me, right? I think I was following, um, what's the name, Lucas Brown, and then Floyd Mason yeah. happened to be there, and then, uh, you know, I just randomly, you know, just interviewed him on the spot, uh, but he was just an up comer, up and comer. Well, yeah. I, but it's good to see him doing well. Don't quote me on this, but I believe this is the fight that David Light what um, wants is against Floyd Mason, and. It's a dangerous fight, in my opinion. A good fight, but a dangerous fight um, where winners will actually get themselves back in, like, good world title contention, especially for, like, since David Light has been away for a while. Um, hey, can, but he's can, going... Yeah, can you talk a little bit about the, you know, how David Light was stripped of the title? So, um, this, is, I, this is not what I heard from correspondents. I've been looking through um, world title rankings and um, WBO has removed the regional title from David Light from the top 15 rankings, which essentially this is their secret way of saying, oh, we stripped them from the title. Um, this could actually mean also like, uh, this could actually mean multiple things, like um, maybe their team didn't actually let WBO that know that they had an uh, injury, um, which, you know, that could have actually possibly held their regional type up uh, the regional ranking status for a little bit longer than where it is now um but you know it's just one of those things that he was injured here it's been well over a year since he's fought and i guess there's no one without money um included to actually fight at the moment as well so it's a it's a tricky situation gotcha, gotcha. Okay. um also interesting if you actually look at this card on 4th of march in um australia this is angelo de Carlo which is actually what I wanted to talk about alongside Brian Ameth, Brian, Brian from before the Australian promoter. He's another big name in Australia that really upbrings um, Australian boxers. Um, the good thing, the difference between Brian and Angelo is uh, he actually has a few New Zealanders on stable. So Billy Limove, he's originally from New Zealand and he's fighting for the middleweight title. Uh, also on the cards, he's got junior tougher who's um originally from avondale and he's uh, fighting on the card as well he has we haven't seen him since 2017 so you know it's good to see new, um we've got australian promoters promoting new zealand fighters that live in australia so yeah look this is why we do the show because i would not know any of this <laughs> i would not know where to even start looking for this kind of information so hopefully viewers you know uh, find this useful you know oh just just talk to me yeah, I'll just tell you all the information. Um, shall we move on uh, to a yes. big, big, big fight? Miyamoto didn't just knock her out. She kind of just annihilated her. Like 90, uh, sorry, 85 seconds, as you can see here. 85 seconds, she, um, she drops Asia in the first round. Like, that, that's just amazing. 85 seconds. And is this the third time fighting? This is the third time they fought. Um, and as you know, Miyamoto made history becoming the first person to hold not only three, um, three titles in the women's division, but three different weight divisions as well. So she has uh, two uh, titles from one commissioning body, one title from different commissioning bodies, and like th um, of course, three different weight divisions. So this is the first time ever um, in New Zealand history to capture three different titles.
Miyamoto, a friend of the show, uh, we need to have her on and talk about her win and talk about what's her plans, you know? Yeah, well, she says she is ready for, I've seen it on uh, multiple interviews um, that she's been having a lot recently. She's, of course, the media up north, media love her. The women's boxing in America love her. Um, the like, New Zealand media just love her, but, well, obviously because of her bubbly personality. And also, like, she gets business done. So, you know, she, she's hungry. She wants those international fights, and she wants those fights in New Zealand as well. So, yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, hungry in all sense of the word, you know, hard worker. And plus, she's always ready to do an interview, you know, always has a smile on her face. So just a wonderful personality, you know? Shit, <laughs> like a star, like a rising star. <laughs> exactly. And, like, I still want to see the fights with, you know, Gentiana Lupi. I want to see the fights with baby Nansen and also Troy Garton as well I know the Troy Garton fight's not going to happen because it's just weight dif two different weight divisions that just do not do well with each other so taking that out of the mix but baby Nansen Gentiana Lupi let's make those fights happen I remember the Rebecca Jennings fight um when she fought baby Nansen I would love for Rebecca Jennings to come out of retirement just to make this fight happen um uh, do you remember Rebecca Jennings uh, yes, I do. Yeah, she was a kickboxer, though, right? Uh, no, she she was. Um, they already fought twice, though, right? I mean, uh, and you know, I mean, there's there's no there's no point repeating that, is it? I mean, it's gonna no, be no, the same. No, 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 no. This is Rebecca Jennings. She uh, uh, was under uh, not under it. She said six wins, one loss, one draw. Um, like she fought mostly debut boxers. She had her first international fight. On the Lewis uh, Lewis um, promotion that we don't talk about. Shh, we don't talk about. Um, okay, then, I'm sorry, I'm mistaken. Okay, you're thinking about um, Michelle Jenkins. That's what you're. Thinking oh about. yeah, my bad. Yeah, got gotcha, gotcha, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, Rebecca Jennings. That would be an awesome fight to see. Like the so, same weight division as well with the super feathers. So, you know, I would love to see that if she came out of retirement. I think she had she did box uh, did kickboxing and she had an amateur boxing background. So. Um, yeah, one thing I would love to see as well. So that that's uh, three boxes that we've got. I would love to see um, Michelle Preston. She's been wanting to get back in the ring again. Um, however, Michelle Preston mostly focuses on the super flyweight and the bantamweight division, where Miyamoto she feels comfortable at feather, but she is at her perfect weight at super bantam. She hasn't been tested yet to go down to that weight. So maybe a possibility, super bantamweight, or maybe even inching closer to it uh, for a catch weight with Miyamoto and Michelle Preston. Because Michelle Preston is a two-time, I'll, I'll even bring up, is a two-time world title um, challenger herself. And she went to Argentina twice to fight for the world title, lost both times, but yeah. So as you know, world title, world title. She fought uh, Naomi, who um, was a who was ranked on the world stage, and she defeated her. So you know, it's big, big background. Went for world title multiple times. So yeah. Also, congratulations! I heard your article got picked up by the NZ Herald and um, who else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mari TV, Mari Te Television, and uh, Women's Boxing. So. <laughs> yeah, congrats, man! Well done. Thank you, thank you. I do I do my writing all the time. Um, okay. Last last thing, last thing for tonight. Uh, we've got Alex Hannon has got oh two sweet hands, in. He's, sweet hands. Um, he's got two fights booked in on March twelfth and again April first. But we're not going to focus on April first. We're going to focus on March twelfth. Uh, we haven't seen him since his uh, smashing loss against Andre Mikhailovich um, for for that big fight. Um, you know, you know, it was the most entertaining fight. Or, almost the most insane fight in my whole career of watching boxing. So I would have loved, you know, I hope one day that there's another, like another one down the line. They probably don't need to do it, but, you know, I would have loved to actually see that again. <laughs> um, both boxes are incredibly entertaining, or at least put them both on the same card. So, yeah. Uh, Alex Cannon is defending his New South Wales middleweight title. He won that title in January 2001, so it's important that he defend it going up against this person who I don't know much about, you know, don't know much about. He's Australian. 
ranked far down 17th in the Super Welterweight division. So, yeah. Um, fighting on March 12th. Do you have any comments, Josh, on uh, Alex Hannon? Uh, that was a that was a you know his last one was a was a special one you know they fought on the undercard of uh, uh, Justice Honey uh, against Paul yeah. Gallon so you know a great card for both of the fighters I'm you know happy their name got out there I mean I know it was a little bit controversial when uh, when Alex Hannon kind of punched uh, <laughs> not, not a punch but just a little tap on uh, you know for um, Andre but you know I think their names are out there now and you know that's that's a good thing right for the sport yeah. Yeah, yes, it's exactly. always good to have a little, and, little controversy. Uh, it was the f- what I like to call the first big test for Alex Hannon was Andre Mikhailovich, where Andre Mikhailovich has had a couple of other fights which were proper tests. I mean, mm-hmm. like he went through Shea Brock. No, no offense against Shea Brock. Shea Brock was is an amazing boxer, but um, he just kind of breathed through Shea Brock. Um, he found it more of a challenge for Mar- against Marcus Hayward, but that was his first fight in the super welterweight division. And of mm-hmm. course, uh, he, la- his, he lasted the 14 rounds with Gunnar Jackson and fought big fights with Chase Haley and um, Adrian Tai here. So, for, and also his fight against um, Jerome Pascal on his second professional fight, um, second professional professional fight. So, you know, he's, uh, I mean, that's an incredible CV right there, right? I mean, that resume just speaks volumes, right? Those are some of the toughest that's fighters right. in, in NZ. And also, not just that, he's a Pro Box New Zealand middleweight champion, uh, NCPBC super welterweight champion, like two, t- so it's a two time, two division um, boxing champion for New Zealand, and he's now ready for those international fights. Alex Hannon, his first proper big test was against. Um, Andre Mikhailovich. So I'm wanting to see more big tests for Alex Hannon. Mm, same. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's uh, that's what's that's what's what. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. That's what's what. That's what's happening in boxing at the moment. There you go. Thank you, Benji. Thanks for filling us all in. Appreciate it. And take care, the, man. I hope you're all right. This I hope is the family's fastest- all good. Is this the fastest show we've ever done? You know, it, I think it's nice like this. You know, it's just a quick. It's a quick bite quick bite <laughs> a quick bite so yeah all right all right well we'll see you next time here on what's what with benji obviously but we're not putting it in the name anymore just what's what um next week let's see what we can do we can probably get someone on the show that's a lot more things are happening we'll probably discuss more of like um the david toy to po versus uh mo who's saying with craig thompson doing more shows and more shows and we'll probably go into more shows that are actually been cancelled at the moment because of this outbreak. So that, that's probably what we'll talk about next week. All right. Keep us filled in. All right. Take care. Yeah.